tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. My name is Aaron Micklow and I'm here with Pascal Briggs. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm wonderful. It's, it's been a great weekend here. Yeah, it's the last night of Rebellion. You just got off stage on the acoustic stage. It was great. Thank you. Yeah, so I actually met you last year here by accident. Um, you were on stage with the briefs, and I didn't realize that Kix was not there. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, Kix couldn't make it to the European gigs, so I was helping out. Yeah. Still am at the moment. Uh, he's still the number one bass player. Yeah. For the briefs, of course, and he plays all the American dates. And I would love to see him uh, play with the briefs over here, too. Yeah. Uh, at some point. So how long have you been playing with them? It's been a it's been quite a few years, right? No, no, it's like it's been a year now. Basically, we started um, I started touring with them. Last year, August, we yeah. played Rebellion. Yeah, that was the first line of shows that I did with them, yeah. I didn't recognize you at first because it's like you had a hat on and I was filming and I was just like, this guy, I think this guy's new. Who, who is this? Who is this person? And then I, we saw you perform on the acoustic stage again. And it was like, oh, there's that guy. And then it turned out that the camera here actually knew you from years ago from, from touring. Oh yeah, he just told me that story. We have a mutual friend, Nathan Maxwell. I, I love him to bits. And uh, Nathan, hello, if you see this, I miss you. tour with with him right yes was it with Floggy molly or with his other band the buddy no Gang? no it was uh with the uh, with the original bunny gang yeah that's um yeah I, I was really impressed by that my booking agent um she played me like she was like hey you want to you want to go on tour with a, with a guy from Floggy molly and i was like mm, yeah i don't know i'll check out his music and then i did i listened to one of his songs and i was like i called her and i was immediately i want to tour with that guy because his music is so heartfelt and it moves me and it's the one you know so yeah yeah having seen your acoustic set and having been friends with the bunny gang for a lot of years i could definitely see how the two of you touring together would make sense your music is kind of similar in the way where it's very um soulful and melodic and soft but still has that power yeah, behind we're soft it. boys yeah <laughs> but it we still have has a lot the of power tattoos there. and stuff but yeah we're soft boys powerful soft boys <laughs> actually used to have a band called District and I oh, just yeah. heard you saying to someone buying your merch that you're like man I really miss having a band I want to get like a punk band back together yeah because I feel this this kind of shitty hippie music I can still do that when I'm old I mean I'm, I'm playing every now and then if people ask me a rebellion yeah it's always great but I'm not looking for a singer songwriter tour I I, I kind of hate the singer songwriter genre you know there's a couple of exceptions like Austin Lucas he's amazing but the whole thing of everyone being a singer songwriter and all the punk rock is going, oh, we're singer songwriter. You know, I, I don't, I'm, I, I don't care for that. You know, so yeah. I mean, yeah, we're, we're gonna do some gigs with District probably next year. Oh, again, are you? After a long time, yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> What was it that kind of made you veer off on this? Of Was it just testing the waters of wanting to maybe see what it was like to be a singer songwriter and then realizing, no, I really prefer a band? Yeah, I mean, there was a time for me where it was perfect to do it and I really felt it. I, I still feel it if I go on stage, I still give 100%. Um, but yeah, there was a time when I didn't have a band 
It went downhill with this drink. We split up. I didn't get along with people. I was drinking too much, you know. So, and I was, I was getting depressed, and I was spending time by myself listening to Hank Williams and uh, all that music. And then, yeah, I just, um, out of desperation, I just grabbed my guitar and, and did this one man thing but i was never connected with that singer songwriter scene you know yeah. the guys with the checked shirts and the, the big i don't even know the tunnels you know and the beards you know all that scene you know i fucking hate it I've only ever seen you here at Rebellion, but hearing the stories from Joe, where he was like, ah, oh, I remember the first time I ever saw Pascal. He comes out in this like leather, like floor length army coat, military coat. No, it was more like a crombie coat. I mean, he's exaggerated. <laughs> I don't wear really wear much yeah. leather. I'm a vegetarian. Okay. Oh, be, be Th that almost leather. sounds like, you know, no, I'm, no, it was just more like a crombie coat, really. Okay. Like a root boy thing you know. oh, okay. I'm an old root boy okay and then he said you had like a big grill though on your teeth my teeth yeah some of them fell out you know I'm losing my teeth no no you had like he said you had a grill like I don't know what the word is no for it here. wasn't a grill <laughs> no <laughs> your well, story makes all you give wrong. all the wrong information I mean I'm not 13 no I have silver <laughs> teeth I still have some I don't know which side some fell out it's not a grill. I like this, the, the stories that he tells me because it's like, apparently none of it's true. It's his exaggerated version of what he saw when he Joe, you need contact lenses. And most of all, she started a wild back with Nathan Maxwell there were a lot of drinks had yeah <laughs> so maybe yeah, that we was... hung out with the Rhea McKenzie's that night oh we wow met. yeah so you know that explains it maybe I feel afraid for you on that so the shows with district can you talk about when those are coming up and kind of what was the thing that made you guys kind of want to get back and do shows again after you went on this journey of playing on your own well, we missed the band, and I must say, I mean, District is not like a, it's never been like a huge band in a in a way of mainstream success, but of all the bands that I've played in, and I'm a little bit of a gypsy, you know, I I have my stints here, I play with this band, and I fill in there, and, but District, of all the bands, is the most, um, it's the closest to my heart, it's my it's my band, you know, it's, yeah. it's important to me, not important in the music industry so much, but... A lot of people love that record, Don't Mess With The Heart Punks. And I love that, that particular lineup. And uh, it's a sense of humor, that band, those guys together. We have a certain sense of humor that no one understands. And I miss it. I miss hanging out with them. And yeah. we didn't, the bass player, he was not for, um, for touring. You know, we had offers like to tour the States, like in 2004, when the record came out, it went down well. Yeah. We had offers and he was like, no, I'm not gonna go on tour in, in the States. It's too much for me. Um, so that's how it all, you know, uh, ended. And um, no, now we feel like we, we want to do it again. Uh, we might do a couple of recordings. Um, the drummer and we, we love each other, but we don't get along yeah. so well. So we're kind of, Okay, let's not, you know, go on tour. I mean, we really like each other. We can, we, we, we'd be small fine. small doses, maybe. Yeah. Not I mean, like we can extended... meet, me, when I meet him, we have a really nice conversation about how we not get along, you know, but so, so we might be, uh, you know, separate <laughs> hotels and, you know, but it, it'll all work. Yeah. You know? he's, he's the greatest drummer, you know, this district without him, you know, wouldn't work. I love the guy, so we decided let's, let's give it another shot, you know. Yeah, but with more space, if somehow that's possible for a touring band yeah yeah <laughs> how can you like make the that Ramones, possible? you know cj you know he followed them on his well i don't have a motorbike you know i yeah I, i'm not much of a social animal if i had a motorbike i would just 
be on my motorbike and then just come for the gig, you know? Yeah. I, I don't like hanging out too much. You can be in the van and it's like, this is your row, this is my row, don't speak to me until we arrive. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> telling me that years ago you had like a, a punk store in Germany is that correct oh yeah, yeah yeah the dirty faces yeah we had a record shop and a label that was like mid 90s to late 90s or 2000 and uh, my friend Jeschke who lives in the States now he still continued for a couple of years he still put out records but he eventually closed down the uh, the shop because uh, he went to university and uh, had another career which I'm like super impressed by. That's cool. Well, so how was that running a shop and how has that kind of influenced who you are today? Because I mean, at a time like in the 90s before the internet and social media, when people were still shopping in stores and, and just basically things were a lot fucking harder than they are now. How well, was it? Well, people weren't so much shopping. They mostly came to drink and yeah. to meet up. And then it was a you know, more like a social club somehow. I mean, people bought records. We had good records yeah. too. And we put out records, you know, yeah. so music was important, but it was more like the, the punk scene and the street punk scene at that time. It came back in the nineties. So um, people were, they, they come by on the weekend, there'd be like 50 punks and skins and that hanging out at the shop and then uh, starting drinking. And then we'd go to a gig together, you know, on the yeah. train somewhere, you know. And uh, it was a very, very important time yeah. for me. But the, the shopping and the shop and the business side was not so much part of it. I was a terrible businessman. I never opened the shop in time. I, I slept there in the shop window. I was, was like, really, no, you know, it, it wasn't good. And also, me as an American, that also is very European. I mean, it's, it's a very different culture. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, yeah, it's very different. We don't really have uh, stores like that where you can just kind of hang out, but I did notice that in Berlin, it sounds like yeah. your store was kind of similar to what Cortex is today. Oh yeah, May maybe, yeah, a little more uh, run down than Cortex. You know, Cortex is kind of posh compared to what we have. Yeah, I mean- I, I, I'll send you, uh, I have a, there's a video and uh, I, send, I can send you some pictures, you know? Yeah, I think I remember that. You sent it to me and it was very funny. It was almost like an ad that you said was on the television. Oh yeah, I already did. Okay, okay, so or you got the picture, right? It was okay, very yeah, funny. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a very, uh, you know, in a time before electronics are what they are today. Yeah, so for sure. So it's amazing to have any kind of videography from those times before. It was so easy to have a camera and so easy to snap photos and videos. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear what you say, yeah. So with that, I, I read that... Historical document. Yeah, a piece of history. Clear night for a kid. It's a clear night. A clear night. Clear night for a kid. It's a clear night. So I read that you did your last album, your last solo album yourself. It was all DIY, but I've seen videos of you on YouTube too, where it was kind of you recording um, in small rooms on your own, just kind of, you've always kind of had a very DIY, like kind of jam going on. <laughs> can you talk about that? Yeah, I, I can talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it's not like that it's me alone in a small room. It's not that DIY. I yeah. mean, I do, I have recorded with, with great uh, recording um, in great studios uh, with recording engineers. Um, but I never really got around to go into a studio and like finish a proper album. So both of my albums are more like demos being put together um, that I recorded over the years and then I, I mastered them. And it's like both those albums have been recorded in like 
20 different places, even like one song, I recorded a bit of mandolin there and then I recorded a bit of uh, kazoo in Italy. And you know, it's it's like that. It's a, it's a patchwork thing yeah. because um, and this last album, I didn't really want to put it out. It was my record label. I said, why don't you put out another record? So I just went through my scrapbook of, of recordings and some of it is even mastered MP3s of rough mixes that I recorded in the States when I was uh, in Los Angeles with Zander Schloss and uh, we recorded in the studio and I only got the rough mixes as MP3. So, so I mastered those and stuck them on the record because it sounded fine. That's stuff cool. Like that. yeah. So I would imagine with you recording kind of bits and pieces all over the world that maybe influenced the album to be something that, because it wasn't all done, for instance, at one time, no. and it wasn't done in one place. No. So you're kind of like, you have those breaks in between and you're influenced by your surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And traveling. I mean, so it's like, it's a diary. You yeah. Know? More or less. That's cool. What's next for you? Obviously, the upcoming shows with District, but what do you have anything else in the works? Well, there's a there's a brief tour coming up uh, in December. Cool. A European tour, France uh, with our friends from the Scanners, and uh, a London gig, and then some some uh, gigs in Germany, including the Poor and Weird Festival. Um, what is that? Which is named as it's a little indoor festival, which is named after the briefs. Um, so the briefs were like, hey, you know, the festival is named after us, but we should. We should probably we should, be playing that. <laughs> we should probably play it, headlining it. And um, well, uh, the guy who puts it on, Henry, he, he, he quit doing the festival. Last year was the last issue. But when he heard the briefs wanted to play, he said, well, let's do it one more time. So uh, there's going to be Poor and Weird Festival uh, 2019 in December. That's awesome. In Germany, Hamburg, Berlin and Dresden. Yeah. That's awesome. And then next year will be District. And uh, I don't know, I'm putting on shows. I'm, I'm booking shows for friends, you know. That's cool. Other bands. Well, that's all I've got for you today. So thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. And uh, enjoy the rest of the festival. Don't miss the damn. Don't miss them. Hey, ho, this is Pascal Briggs. You're watching Last Rockers TV. Just like the Vice Quartz song, Last Rockers. Hey, fire!